And Mind Crypto here. I hope we're all having a wonderful day. Remember, please subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any further videos. And remember to tickle that like button for me. You'll be doing me a massive favor. Remembering none of this is financial advice as I'm not a financial advisor and none of the information provided in this video should ever be taken as a signal to buy or to sell. So here we are on Arkham Intelligence. And as we can see, the price is $116. We're down 0.78% in the last 24 hours, down 14% in the last seven days with a 24 hour volume of 30 million. So yes, things are looking okay today. Um, we've seen some lows uh, and we've, see, we've got a bit of a head and shoulders pattern forming. Now, does that mean we're going to go lower? We'll have to wait and see. If we look at the exchange reserves at the moment, we've been going sideways on this for some months now, ranging between that 1.368 million to now we're looking at that 1.388 million. So slowly going sideways. And much of this is we're seeing these big buys, but we're also seeing people start to sell. And we can see here, net flow is currently minus 191 on quant at the moment. So net deposits on exchange are low compared to the last seven day average. So lower deposits can be interpreted as lower selling pressure. And if we look at the RSI, says neutral, but probably a little bit more in fear, which isn't a bad thing because that means accumulation phase where we can buy more and I am doing so. Now, I saw this wallet yesterday, which was a large transaction from CB to a private wallet, which was 1,572 quant value of $184,000. And this wallet holds 35,000 plus quant with a value of $3.94 million. Now there are loads of wallets like this that are accumulating. And we ask the question, why are they accumulating? What do they see that a lot of people that get to this point where they feel fatigued, they got that crypto mindset, chase the green candles and forget about quant. Now this wallet only holds quant and many others only hold quant. You've got to again, ask yourself the question why there is this storage of quant and why are we not seeing the price go up? Now, this is a big question. And I, and I said here, I guarantee someone will ask me, why don't all these big transactions reflect in the price? reason why you sell, they buy. And that's exactly what it is. And they're very, very clever. So they'll be working out the metrics of what's being sold. So they don't move the price because they have their buy orders set. So as you're selling and they'll look at how much is sold, they'll buy that amount as to not move the price. And Clocky rightly said here, they are buying it all up to those who sell. Smart move on their part. And I said, absolutely, they don't want to move the price. Institutions need a lot of time to enter their positions unnoticed. They maintain sideways action whilst retail get bored. We've just got to be patient. And as you can see here, for this reason, institutions need a lot of time to enter their big positions. They try to appear as small investors who are randomly placing a lot of relatively small positions in the market. The only way they can slowly and discreetly accumulate their positions is sideways price action. There they can hide their activity beautifully. Now, to us, you know, buying 2,000, 2,500 quant is a fair amount, a lot of money. But for them, that's probably peanuts. I bet they wish they could buy a lot more, but they can't because they'll be moving that price way too quickly and then we'll start to see people sell off even harder than they already do. Now, I see Quant as a long-term hold. Now, I'm gonna be quite honest. I'm probably gonna only sell a very small portion during the bull run, dependent on what the price comes to because what amount will change my life and with my future plans on what I'm deciding to do. But remembering, I've got other bags that I'm gonna sell that will make me a fair amount of money to do what I wanna do. So therefore I see Quant as a long-term hold. The technology is absolutely awesome. And everywhere I, walk, everywhere I look, I'm, to, I'm seeing interoperability as one of the key words. In every industry, I read about interoperability, healthcare, um, the internet of things, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this is so prominent. So if I was to sell off during the next bull run, are we going to see prices fall back to the lows? With the narrative of CBDCs coming in the future, are they going to then drop back to $250? I don't think so, because I honestly think that these institutions will keep buying in and we will start to see 
those exchange reserves drop lower and lower and lower, pushing the price higher and higher and higher. For me, I believe on is at the center of this new fourth industrial revolution. We're moving into digital so quickly, it's unbelievable. Because tokenization is at the forefront of this big movement to get everything, all those illiquid assets, liquid. Now, see this from Keta, and I thought it was quite good this morning. He says, the amount of you probably liquidated your long-term holdings because you couldn't handle minus 27% price swing is not surprising. Over the last two weeks, I've heard nothing, but this thing can't even hold gains or stable coin. Quant is one of the best, if not the best, risk reward asset in the top 100. I say my one-liner quite often that rewriting the entire financial system is not a meme because it's absolutely not. The US patent news that we actually saw yesterday is only the tip of the iceberg. And for you newbies out there, they're also building retail wholesale CBDCs with every damn government on the planet. On top of that, confirmed with the Bank of International Settlements, Amazon, Oracle, Nexi, UST, Volo, Zapier, UK Finance, Digital Pound Foundation, Innovate Finance, ITSA, MasterCard, BNY Mellon, Bank of Canada, Revolut. So many that I am convinced. I'm convinced to hold this for as long as I need to because I've positioned myself to sell all my other bags so that I can hold one. That's my plan. You might think I'm mad, but that's my plan. I may offload some, but I'll be keeping the majority. And Keta goes on to say here, and here you are capitulating and crying at a measly 1.4 billion market cap on a token that has very finite supply of 14.6 million tokens. And he says, rant over, please sell me your tokens. And here, here to that, because as we see this infographic that's been around for some time, one is at the center of everything. Interoperability is key. Now, I saw this from Greg Lunt last night. Good to see him back. He says, well, five years after submitting their initial application, Quant just had their patent officially granted by the US Patent Office. Their unique method of providing enterprise level interoperability between blockchains is now protected until 2040. The run will be legendary. He's absolutely right. Because if you look at this, they applied for this five years ago. It's taken five years to get to this point. Will it take another five years for everything to progress the way in which a lot of us actually think, believe in this project. And I certainly do too. That's why I will keep holding it. And as we can see here, Quant, we've secured a new patent, part of our ongoing mission to make distributed ledger technology simple, trusted, and future-proof. And we can see on their website down here, we have secured a new patent, part of our ongoing mission to make distributed ledger technology simple, trusted, and future-proof. The patent Title Blockchain Communications and Ordering recognizes that Quant has invented a unique method for chronologically ordering transactions from different blockchains. Prior to our research and development, different block times, the average time taken to generate a new block across blockchains meant that finding a definitive transaction ordering method over multiple blockchains, one that a consortium could agree on, was disjointed and an inconsistent process. This hindered firms from integrating multi-blockchain-based projects into existing systems or using more than one type of blockchain in their operations. The grant of Japanese patent recognizes that Quant has introduced a method to agree on a universal time zone for all blockchains so that enterprises and small businesses can produce reliable consensus-based records. Although we work with large institutions, we also aim to make blockchain more accessible to firms of all sizes via our low-code SaaS platform, Overledger. Other elements of Overledger technology are also patent pending in various jurisdictions. That's absolutely massive. Other patents waiting to be approved. Now, you don't see foresight in Quant. I don't know what you see. But tell you what, I'm here for the long term and I will hold my bags until I'm ready when I've seen this all come to some fruition in the future. That's me. You do what you've got to do, but I know what I'm doing. Remember, none of this is financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. I'm just some guy that has done my research, 
looked into countless projects over the years and see Quan as the big daddy of everything within blockchain. Because what it does is it opens a gateway, opens the door to huge money entering this market. But that takes time. It's not done yesterday. It's not done tomorrow. We're still waiting for this CBDC narrative to start playing out. But I still believe it will do well in the, in the next bull run. You know, maybe as we hit 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, who knows? Or even more, who knows? But what is the true value of Quan? Where do you think it's going to go in five years' time? Not this next bull run, but the one after that when we've had this time, for the narrative to play out. Could it hit five figures? You'll have to wait and see. But I personally think this is an opportunity of a lifetime. So there you go, guys. Just a quick update. All the best and I'll catch you later.